Hey Brahmas, in this video we will showcase the database Gale in Context for U.S. History. Let's start on the library's website and click on Databases A through Z. Then I'm going to click on the letter G for Gale since I already know the name of this database. And once I find it, I'm just going to click on it. And my browser already knows my student ID number and my month and date of birth. So this is the front page of this database. The first thing to notice from the front page is all of these topics under these historical categories, such as American colonies or economics or government documents. If you want to see the full list of all of these topics, you can easily click on this browse topics icon with the light bulb. And the cool thing about all of these topics that you see here is that this database already has a collection of research about that topic. If you're still deciding on your topic, keep in mind that you can always look at the categories um, under this drop down menu. But we understand that these categories are not very comprehensive. So you can try to figure out if your own topic is listed in this list. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to pretend that I'm doing a paper on Phyllis Wheatley. And Phyllis Wheatley already has a report or a heading in this list on, in the W for Wheatley. So I'm gonna open that up. And by report, I mean more of a collection of research. So Phyllis Wheatley is important enough to have her own collection. And this very first paragraph is the introductory article to this historical figure. And if you click on read more, you can read an introductory article about Phyllis Wheatley, who happens to have been the first African-American poet and the first black woman to publish a book in the United States during the revolutionary era. And if I wanted to read this article later, you can easily email it to yourself in this paper plane icon. And if you need the citation, you can also click on this cite icon with the quotation marks. And by default, you will get the MLA 8th citation for this one article. And as you're gathering articles, you do want to keep track of the sources so that you can cite your sources at the end of your paper in the Works Cited page. Let's go back to the front page of the Phyllis Wheatley report. Now, we were just looking at the introductory article, but right below it is a more interesting section. In this grayed out bar, you can see various types of sources that this report has already gathered on Phyllis Wheatley. But the more useful one for you and your assignment is going to be this primary source category. So if you click on primary sources, this database will show you all of the primary sources that this one database has on the topic of Phyllis Wheatley in this case. So it seems like there's only eight, but let's check them out. The very first one, general commentary from feminism in literature, that's probably, it probably has some type of poem in there, but I'm not really looking for that. The second result is also from feminism in literature, so I'm gonna skip that one. Now, notice that this third one, it says a letter from Phyllis Wheatley to, and right here it says author Phyllis Wheatley. So this reassures me because I can see that this, this one document was written by Phyllis Wheatley, and therefore it's a historical document and a primary source by her. So it's not somebody else writing about her. And then... Right below that, we see another letter from Phyllis Wheatley to George Washington. So both of these are great examples of primary sources in relation to Phyllis Wheatley. 
let's open up this first one. So even though it still looks like an article, this is a primary source because we know that it's a letter from her to George Washington. And as we begin the article, you can see that there's a commentary on this source. So this is more secondary source material because the actual primary source begins down here. Now this is simply the text of the letter and it, it is rather short be because it seems she only wrote a short letter to him. But this still counts as a primary source. And if you needed to cite it, you have the MLA 8th citation down there. You can also email it to yourself. And the email from this database will include the MLA citation, a link to come back to this database, and the text of the actual document. Before we leave this primary source, let's take a look at the box that says Explore on the right-hand side. This is worth taking a look at because sometimes you can discover new keywords or concepts that might help you with your research question. For example, right here we can see that George Washington wrote a letter to Phyllis Wheatley, or down over here, it seems like Phyllis Wheatley wrote a poem titled to His Excellency General George Washington. So sometimes this can be very useful in terms of finding other sources about your thesis. So let's go back to the primary sources under Phyllis Wheatley. And even though there are only eight of them, it seems like the letters might be the most useful ones if my research topic was Phyllis Wheatley. But depending on your topic and your research question, you might be looking for a different type of primary source, such as a government document or a manuscript. But also remember that these other sources can still be useful for your research as secondary sources, specifically the academic journals, because these are academic articles from scholarly journals related to Phyllis Wheatley, and these are still academic sources that can help you with your thesis. And if you don't find anything really good about your topic in this database, please remember that that is why we are covering multiple tools, several different databases, so that you can find more sources depending on your topic.